Hi everyone, Humphrey here from Lineheart Football and today we are joined by Jacob Russell. Jacob is a young pro at Crystal Palace. This is the Lionheart Football and Wild Hydrate Can't Wait to Push On series. Okay, Jacob, how are you? Good to see you. I'm good, thank you. You, you all right? Yeah, good, thanks. Good, good, good. I see you got the, uh, the bright palace blue on today. Yeah, I put it on especially, number 61. That was my number last year, so... I love it. Are you going to maintain that number this year? I don't think we'll get a choice. I think I'll probably be okay. know, some, something in the 50s, I think, probably. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. If your number gets lower, it's always a good sign, right? Definitely, yeah. Right. It's like, it was, it's like anything above 60s, like 18s, and then like anything like 40 to 50, that's sort of 23s. So, okay. Um, yeah. uh, good stuff. I wish you well. Right, so how's, um, how's this period been for you then? Or lockdown situation? It's been tough. It's been tough because like I was doing well and stuff. I was playing like 20, I was getting 23 minutes, stuff like that. So it's been tough like because obviously it stopped all that. Like obviously it's, just, it's like a scary time for everyone but like, I was I was doing well per, like, on a personal level. I was doing pretty well and stuff. Um, yeah and then but again it's been like an opportunity to just like take a step away from football like try and do a few other things and stuff while working on football like it's giving you that little bit more time I think to do try and do other like try and work on different aspects of your game that you wouldn't normally do at training I think so that's why I've been sort of trying to sort of get something out of it by sort of coming back when we do come back in like a month or so just trying to be in a better position than I was when I left oh brilliant yeah I think that's really important as well like, and, and it's good you're sharing that self-awareness to say these are areas of your game that you probably wanted to focus on more, but maybe with time constraints, um, now you've taken that opportunity. So it's good staying positive. We'll come uh, back to that more. Uh, we'll touch on that more later. But just tell me, like, during this period, has there been any other sort of life hobbies that you've taken up that you probably haven't got the chance to in the past? I've probably never played so much PlayStation before, but... <laughs> No, I'm not. What's your game? Uh, it's it's FIFA, but obviously I tried yeah. my hand. Of, I tried my hand a little bit of Warzone, but it was that wasn't for me. In the Gulag. No, uh, I never made it out of the Gulag, but I'm not really. <laughs> a cool, uh, I'm not really a Call of Duty player. Like probably FIFA, but yeah, but that's that's it. That's not really too much. Like I've been doing outside. It's literally just been like running, like. Like specific goalkeeper sessions and stuff. It's just really been like just trying to put myself in a good position. Okay, it's decent. And how's your like your 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 mentality been? Have you been have you felt positive? Have you been Yeah, I think, been it's hard. I, I think it's hard, like no matter what job you do, I think everyone's sort of like maybe the first sort of week or so, like you're staying at home and doing home sessions, it's all right. You think like this is all right, but but after a while, it just gets, it's repetitive, but you just know you've got to keep doing it. It's what you've got to keep doing. Like, you can't stop doing it sort of thing. So, that's yeah. what I think. You keep doing it, eventually you sort of, like, the rewards will come. And when you come back into, like, team sessions and, like, training actually at the club, I feel like um, you'll see the rewards of doing it every day. Yeah. Yeah, of course. No, I agree. I agree, definitely. I think excellence is a habit, isn't it? And trying to just stay yeah. consistent with routine, you're yeah. definitely going to get in the long run. It's good you're being positive. So let's um, let's talk about your football then. And we'll go back to the very beginning when you was probably a lot shorter than what you are now. Um, what age did you start playing? Young. I think pretty young, like... Um, so my cousin was at a team, like a local team. He was a couple of years older, but they started young, um, like just training and stuff. So when I was about five, I think five or six, I went down to this this sort of Sunday league team. It was just training sessions at the time. There wasn't any matches or anything, but I was there and I used to like play football in the garden with my little brother and my cousins like uh, often, like every weekend I'd be at my cousin's house playing football and stuff from like a young age. But then I went to this team and so I was, I was, I was a striker um, from like five, you know, like five, six, seven. I think I was, I was playing on pitch. And then, like when I was seven, the team I was with, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't very good on pitch to be honest. I'll be honest, I wasn't very good. They was like, oh, you can, 
you can carry on playing and stuff, but like we need a goalkeeper. So obviously I, I thought I'd, I'd do it. I, I sort of said I'd do it and that. So I went in goal and then it just went from there really. I was, a, I was at Cholton from nine to 11. And then I got released from there when I was 11. And then I, I was assigned to Palace sort of two weeks later. And it's been, I've been there since I was sort of 11 and sort of loved it really. Oh, brilliant. So set back and then quickly bounce back. That's that's great to hear. Yeah. So before, I mean, you know, prior to you getting picked up to Charlton, yeah. what do you think it was about yourself that was a standout skill um, that alerted you to a professional football club or alerted a professional football club to you? Um, so I think a few things. I think probably like my natural sort of like stature helped. Like I think the fact I was sort of tall for my age and stuff definitely helps. Like, like I, I think I know it, like because it's probably not right, but I know that sort of academies will sort of look for that sort of size and stuff in a goalkeeper. It's probably not the way it should be, but I'm I'm sure academies look for size and stuff definitely in goalkeepers. Um, and I was always taller than everyone else, so I think that probably helps. And I think the fact that I was from a young age, I was quite loud and stuff on the pitch. I used to shout a lot and like stuff like that. So I think it probably helped. They saw that and. So I think it was probably probably them too from a young age, and then sort of as you've been in the system longer, you, the technique starts to come and stuff like that. So I think it was that really. That's brilliant. I mean, even even at nine, I think personality is understated, and um, no, I, I think it's great that you recognise that personality is really key. So yeah. what was what was the feeling like for you then? You know, getting getting picked up by an academy. How did you feel? It was it was good. So it was it was kind of lucky. Um, one of my uh, friends from my Sunday league team had asked me to play in a game for Cholton Development Centre. And I, I went down and it was, it was good and that. Uh, I played quite well and someone come up and told my granddad who was with me on the day um, just said, you should, you should come along for a couple of weeks and we'll let you know. And this was like, this was, I don't know, pretty like, this was, I was under eight at the time, so I was still young. Um, and so I went, I went down to Cholton Academy and it was, it was nice and there was, um, there was a coach there called Lee Smell, who's been at Arsenal as a um, goalkeeper coach. And yeah, he was the one that he, he signed me there. And so obviously that, that, was a, that was a good feeling. That was a good feeling. But then on the other side of it, like when you got let go at 11 and you're still so young, you just don't really understand. Like, like, yeah. That was like obviously a low point. But I think it helped in the fact that the transition from Cholton, from me going into Palace, was so quick. Like, I think if I'd have been sort of going from sort of that them clubs just under academy level, sort of like yeah. if I if I'd have been going from them sort of clubs from like team to team for months or a year or whatever without getting another academy, I think it would have been a lot harder for me. Um, but definitely the fact that it was such a smooth transition from Cholton and then I just like within two weeks sort of thing, I was at Palace and signed and. And like they, they were, they've been always been like really good to me at Palace. So it was like just a, it made it a lot easier than it was. Sort of that that feeling of being released. I didn't have it for long because it was like then you were picked up again. So you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I got you. And obviously being so young as well. I mean, I don't think like rejection should be the main focus or, or you know area of your thoughts. But at that time you know, being let go from Charlton and then obviously getting a, an experience at Palace so soon. How did you feel during that time? Like, what was your mental yeah, process? So, sort of, I, when I got let go from Charlton, I didn't really understand it. I didn't really see it coming or, like, it just wasn't something that I ever thought was going to happen. As, as an, I think as a young kid, you're kind of sort of naive. You think it's just, you, you think you're sort of going to, as a kid, sort of, be there from nine till 18 and then you're going to play for the first team and stuff like that. But obviously anyone that's been involved in academy football knows it's just, it's just not like that. Um, so I was sort of quite naive to that. I just didn't really, so I never saw myself at the time. I didn't think I was going to get released or anything. Um, and then, yeah, it was obviously a massive boost to then um, a coach. At, I knew a scout from Palace called Bert who used to, Bert Dawkins used to be a legend. Uh, yeah, you know, you know him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then Bert, Bert spoke to my granddad, and Bert just said, "Yeah, bring him in." 
and then yeah, the, the goalkeeper coach who's um, sort of the younger goalkeeper coach, Lee. Yeah, he was really good with me, and he told me like pretty quickly. He was like, yeah, he said, just be patient. He said, we'll like we'll sign you. He said, just be patient. Um, so I just kept going, and then within a few weeks, it was sort of done. I was there, and so that was obviously like a massive boost. It's like sort of different ends of the scale. Like one week you're sort of on the, like rock bottom, not rock bottom, but like one week you're sort of low and you're sort of like wondering like what, what do you do now and then the next week you're back in a, like a you're in a what's now a Premier League Academy um, and it's, I think that's like it's just like football yeah, that's just how football is I think yeah it's a very subjective game isn't it and uh, it's based, based on based on opinions for sure and it's, I mean to be honest with you the fact that you're so young you were so young should I say and you didn't let it affect you you just continued playing and I think the cream always rises to the top, you know. It's just um, about being consistent, so that's good. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, m- moving on, you know, as a goalkeeper, what would you say are your strengths now? You said your personality and your stature were obviously standout features at the time. But what, what have you developed as, as strengths of yours over time, do you feel? I'd say, like, my, my communication, which I think that's sort of, like, massively... Sort of now with the whole, like, sweeper-keeper sort of thing that's... Like yeah, Edison's and Allison's and stuff. I think like people don't see what they obviously would do on a pitch, like communication-wise. I think I think it's sort of massively under undervalued. Um, yeah. Like, so the goalkeeper can bring. Obviously, you can see the whole you can see the whole game. So but I think that communication is massive, really. And I, I feel like I've, sort of that's one of my maybe strengths. Um, yeah, probably my my sort of shot stopping and that like one v one. Ability probably as well. I say. Um, obviously, I'm quite. I'm like six foot four, so so like to be able to come out and like smother the ball and get yourself into that sort of block position. I think I can do that pretty well. So I'd say that's probably my other strength, like right now. But obviously, I, I know what I need to work on and stuff. I know like what my weaknesses are and stuff. So. Yeah. Well, what would you say are the areas for improvement for yourself then? And it's it's good you got self awareness. Yeah, I think, um, like, probably, like, with a ball on my feet. Not, like, but I think, like, footballers now, have, like, goalkeepers especially have to be, like, like midfielders in a way. They have to be able to, like, spray the ball, like, 50, 60, 70 yards around the pitch, which I think is tough for, like, for a goalkeeper older than me or my age. It's not really something that, when you was growing up, you were sort of taught to do. Like, it was sort of just... Like, as long as you can kick it, you're all right. But now it's like they want you sort of long passes and stuff, which like, it's obviously it's the way football's going and you just have to adapt. But um, So probably that, I've probably got to get a better at that, sort of that ability to like two touch or whatever, just yeah, like drop it on the player's feet. But it's, yeah, but I'm, I'm working on it. Brilliant. And, you know, goal, goalkeepers, obviously, yeah, it's a lonely, it's a lonely role, right? And... Yeah. Um, it's also uh, an an interesting role because you get different types of characters and different yeah, profiles of keepers. What would you describe your style as as a keeper? Um, pretty like I would say like consistent. Like I'd like to think that re- reliable. Um, yeah. Like I'd like to think that a manager or a goalkeeper coach could sort of trust me that. I'll go in and it'll be like consistent like performances. It, like it won't always be like a ten out of ten because I think that's impossible. That's not possible every week. But like a solid like putting in good like just decent performances and just keep like churning them out. But yeah, I think there's probably like consistency is probably sort of like one of my main aspects. I think but obviously it's hard for a young goalkeeper because just just any young player is still learning. I think so. It's yeah, definitely. But well, I don't think you can under under underestimate the the value of consistency. You know, for a goal, yeah. goalkeeper, for any player, and and in life as well. You know, always showing up, being reliable, and performing um, as expected. I think is is massive. So credit to you. I think it's like attitude as well and stuff. You just like I think sure. manager could, if you, like if you're giving like hundred percent like, day in day out. Like, I think they'll trust you more. 
definitely. I agree. So tell us then, Jacob, you know, you, you've obviously um, signed your first pro. Congratulations to you. And your time will be extended at Crystal Palace longer. Um, what would you say your goals are for the upcoming season? What would you like? What are you looking to push on towards? Um, I would like to sort of train more regularly with the first team that I have. Um, sort of like to train with the first team goalkeepers a couple of times a week or something. Um, but I would like I would like main, mainly from this season to go on loan um, and get like professional football, whether it be in Conference South. It's me in Premier League, whatever. I just to go and get like men's football and yeah. like learn from that and to like adapt to the physicality of that. Um, so yeah, pro- probably that. Probably like to go on loan, but at the same time, with obviously the club going cap one, like I think it'll be interesting as well. Like twenty three's football there will be different this year. Um, like you're going to be playing against like player opposition and stuff. So I think that will be an interesting side to that, but. I would, I would like to spend some time on loan playing men's football, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, a, it's very much so an exciting time for the club. And, um, you know, you're you're right in the middle of it. So I do wish you all the best and, and I look forward to seeing you progress. Thank you. Awesome. All good. Jacob. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to put you through your paces now. Yeah, this is a... I can't wait to push on fitness challenge that I've been doing with all the boys. So I'm right. gonna see how, how fit you've been keeping during lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we've got three rounds. Um the first part is core strength. The second part is speed. And yeah. the third part is ball mastery. Yeah. I know I know keepers are the best of the ball at their feet. So I look forward to seeing your skills at the end. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Right, um, two exercises per round, so nothing too strenuous. All right, just uh, we'll, we'll try and get a little sweat on. All right. Yeah, cool. Okay, first one, we're going to go for a plank, three times round, thirty seconds on, fifteen seconds rest. All right. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Elbow plank. Let's go. Yeah, and relax there. I'm knackered already. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if you trained this morning already, but no, I haven't. I haven't trained this morning, so I'm I'm okay. Yeah, you're feeling fresh. Yeah, all right, cool. Ready? Go okay. oh, again. Back into yeah. it. So, Jacob, would you say you've got a relatively tall family? Yeah, pretty tall. Like all my. All my cousins and stuff are like over six foot, so it's all uh... yeah. Uh, relax there. Your cousin, your cousin that you said inspired you to play, and that you you saw him playing a lot when you were young, and got you into it. Where does he play? What position? He, he used to play centre back for um, like for the lo- for my local team and stuff, and that's sort of what sort of got me into it really. Oh, um, yeah. he play anymore. Let's go again, by the way. So he, he was a centre half. Yeah, he was. Yeah, but he used to be all right. He was, he was a good player, but um, he doesn't play anymore. He's sort of too old for it. Like he's like he's got a job and stuff now. Yeah. Uh, relax there. Okay. Cool. Right. Next one is going to be core. So we're gonna go for just some vertical crunches, legs off the floor. So legs up in the air, and then we're just coming up, try and touch your toes. Ready? Three, two, one, and go. Yeah, relax, Jake. Have a little break. Woo. What, do you think of the, what do you think of the drink? No, it's nice. I like it, yeah. Like, they all taste nice, though. Yeah, it's very smooth. Okay, ready? Go again. Have you tried the the, the summer fruit flavour yet? Yeah, I had that yesterday. What do you think? I thought it was, a, it was 
Probably the nicest one I've tried so far. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It's my, it's my favourite one. These workouts I'm doing, I'm, I'm going to be a beast by the time I'm done with them. <laughs> well, this, is a, this one's quite fun. Right, last one. Three, two, one. Let's go. And relax there. Right. That's the core round done. Into the strength, into the speed round now, sorry. So, very simple. Sprint on the spot. Three, two, one, go. I don't think I've ever seen a keeper move so fast, huh? <laughs> Aaron, actually. Good work. Okay, five seconds, we're down again. Yeah. Three, two, one, and go. Sit, keep pushing. Last one, three, two, one, and go. Three, two, one, and relax there. Good stuff. All right, Jacob, on the ball. In the one is just quick feet. We're going for four soul taps, four tic tacs. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so forth. Yeah? yeah. Ready? Three, two, one. Let's go at speed. And relax there. Good stuff. All right. Little rest. How you feeling? I'm all right, I'm okay. You? You're good? No. Yeah, I've been better. <laughs> all right, let's go again. One, go, yeah, it's cool. And relax there, Jake. Good work. Little rest, one more. So, who's your ultimate team then, Jacob? I've got, I've got a few decent players in there. In, yeah. in, in form, Mbappe. You brought Mbappe? Yeah, in form. Yeah, that's uh, it then, that's it then. Right, <laughs> let's go. And relax there. Okay. Good stuff. Right, Jacob, so we're on to the ball mastery round. Yeah, yeah so. All you're going to do is just in your little area, okay, maneuver the ball with both feet for 20 seconds. Okay, try and keep it under close control. Yeah. And we'll have a little rest. Yeah? Three rounds of that. Three, two, one. And go. There we go. Shout your skills. And relax there. Have a little rest. A little bit of light work. Yes, Jacob, and let's go again. Yeah, I've got my little ball. Avoid the ball. And relax there. Jacob, I've got my little defender. Do you want me to bring mine out? What's that? You want me to get mine? Yeah, you can use a defender if you want. That's it. Yeah. All right, three. Two, one, last one, let's go. There you go. See you later. Flip that. Woo. And relax there, good work. Right, at this point, I'm knackered and my concentration's gone. How important is concentration for you? Very important, I think. Um, yeah. Like, because as a keeper, you can like not touch the ball for like 60 minutes and then yeah, yeah that's it. It's action, but so I think it's very important. Yeah, for sure. Right, let's go and let's hone in. Last, last round. So, this game is called the up to three game. 
yeah, we're going to perform three different e exercises. So, okay. and they all, they all represent a number. So the first number is one, but that action is you got as a keeper. Keepers, there you go. All right. Number two is just going to be two squat jumps. One, two. Number three is going to be a backward sprint and forward. And go. Got it? Yeah. Right. So we only, you only perform one action at a time. So we take it in turn. So I go, I'll do one, you'll do two, I'll do three. Then you'll do one, I'll do two, you'll do three. Got it? So, so if, if, are you saying a number or are we just going in order? One, two, three. We're just going in order. We're doing the action rather than the number. Yeah? All right, yeah. If you muck up, forfeit. All right, yeah, I got it. Okay, right, you start then. Keep up, get up. And then again. What do you do now? What do you do now? Yeah, good. What do you do now? There we go. Good. Let's go. Let's keep with it. Oh no, I messed up. Oh yeah. Okay, I relaxed there. All good. Yeah, I'd expect you to meet me there. Concentration on point. Right, I messed, I messed up, so I'll go for 10 press ups real quick. Right, that's it done, man. Jacob. Perfect, thank you. Pleasure. How did you find that? Yeah, Jacob. So that was a pleasure, man. How did you find it? All good? No, I enjoyed that. No, thank you for your time. Decent. No, it's been uh, it's been great speaking to you, and uh, I hope you enjoy you enjoy the drink. Stay hydrated. Keep training as you've been doing. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to seeing you progressing next season. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Nice one, man. Stay safe. Take care. Take care. Stay safe. Yeah. Bye bye.